hello everybody today we're going to actually go through the work our work session is going to be based on the 68 inch wall quilt border and the name is called star shimmer um, this border grouping i should say is part of the stella maris and it's a very cool border <laughs> i'm not really sure what to tell you about it but if you look at it it sets up we have spikes we have some curved piecing and um, we've we've added a vein in here um, there's a lot of sewing for this border but it really, really adds to the quilt. So um, we're going to start going through the instructions. There's quite a few pages to the instructions for this group. Um, I would like to bring your attention to the very back page to start with. On page 8, you will actually see a layout here on page 8. And it shows that this is our F group. And it also has all of the colors laid out on the back so that you can reference what fabric colors you want to use. So these are our inventory numbers for our colors. Now, with this quilt, we've actually used the same fabrics and we split the color on it. When you color your quilt, you don't have to split the color. You can have all of your spikes the same color um, as a group. You can split it. So we have four of one color group and four of another color group. And your other option you have with this particular quilt is each one of these spikes can be a different color as well. So. It's really fun to color and the cutting instructions and all of the inventory numbers for the fabrics are designed so no matter how you color it, it's going to tell you how much fabric you need to have. All right, so let's go back to page one in your booklet and we're going to just go over a few things. Um, Hopefully by now you guys are starting to get a really comfortable with how to organize your fabrics. So I'm going to start showing you um, where my bags are. So the very first thing is you, you need six bags for this one. And if you read your uh, instructions, you have um, bag F1 and it goes all the way down to bag F6. Okay. And we have left and right units in each one of those bags. So unit bag one is for my F1R unit and bag two is for my F1L unit. And then you go down further. So each bag either has the right unit in it or the left unit in it. As you're working through this, you're gonna wanna look forward just a little bit in your booklet to figure out what units you're actually going to be sewing with and cutting first as you do your paper piecing. So just be aware all the way through here that you're working either with a left unit or a right unit. Okay. Now underneath there on the foundation papers, it shows you the number of pages that you have or maybe that you already cut up. And those pages, um, you have four NP779. You have to have four pages for NP780. You have to have one page for TP569 and one page for TP570. As you go through the cutting for the units, you're going to place all those units into the bags. And I'm not going to repeat all of these there because there's so many of them. So what I want you to do is just look at your units as you cut them out and then pair them up to this very first paragraph under the Ziploc storage bag and make sure you get the foundation papers into the correct bag. 
when you get over to the template layout sheets oh we forgot one there's actually two more pages there there's actually an NP or a TP 571 and a TP 572 so I want you to take all of these and you're going to organize them as a in order for the template layout sheets and then you're also going to organize the T templates together. So what I mean when I'm saying that is when you cut them out, you're going to find template layout sheet number one and put it on the uh, bottom of your stack and work all the way up to the very last number of your template layout sheets. And if you do that, it's going to save you a lot of confusion trying to flip back and forth because we're going to reference the layout sheet number rather than the left and right units because it's easier to refer to a layout sheet number when you're trying to organize, okay? Now, when you get to the T templates, kind of pay attention a little bit to that. Um, I believe there's only, there might be two, two T templates in this pattern which means your T template is an actual size piece. There's no extra yardage around it. When you cut it out, it has to be cut accurately to the exact size of the template. So anytime you see a T dash template, pay attention because that's an actual size template. And in this pattern, those pieces actually fall right in here. So I want you to watch out for those and make sure you get those into the right bags as well because they're easy to lose. Now we're going to go turn the page and we're on page two. At the very top of the page, I'm going to bring this here and point to it, at the very top of the page on page, on page two, is an actual layout of how the colors go together. That's your fabric color layout. What you're looking at, note, this says it's the backside graphics. Sometimes when we put those layouts, we, tell, we show you the front side, which would actually be as if you were looking at the front of the quilt. And on occasion, we'll give you the backside as if you're looking at the foundation papers. And the reason we do that, set it up for the back side, is because there's so many little numbers on here that it gets confusing if you're having to flip your papers over all the time for the right and left side. So it's easier just to pair these up um, on your numbers. Now, I want to show you another trick that helps when you have a lot of colors like that. So if I grab my foundation units for F1A fabric, or this is actually my, I believe this is the center unit. Yes, it is. So this is unit F1R. So that's this piece. Let me move this back. So I'm looking at this piece right here. If I actually came in here and I wrote my fabric numbers down, if I have a whole bunch of different colors, I can actually write each one of the fabric numbers on that, each one of these templates if I'm using a lot of gradating colors. Because I have the ability to do one, two, three, four, five, six different colors there. If I'm only using one color for all of my spikes, then it doesn't make a lot of difference because you're only going to have two colors in your pieces but the adding the colors and some people if they're new to paper piecing will actually go through and put little fabric swatches where each color belongs because if it gets put away sometimes the pieces get lost the templates get lost and you're not exactly sure which color was supposed to go there so it doesn't hurt to put an individual color if you're going to do every um, spike a different color so uh, the fabric chart is pretty, this color chart is, it speaks for itself. It tells you what you need to know 
um, when you're looking at the fabrics for the templates and uh, the big places, those are just basically we're repeating color here and repeating color here. And I don't think you have the ability to break or change that color in your instructions. Okay, look at my fabric chart. It's a long fabric chart. And I, you need to put that together because if you put it away and come back and you lose anything, this is the only way that you're going to be able to get back to where you need to be on it. So I have all of my fabrics listed here. And then as we went through our fabric information, I went to fabric A1A and I put a swatch there. And then I went to fabric... 1B and I put a swatch there so that as I'm working through I keep looking at those colors because it's going to keep reversing on me and it's really easy to pick up the wrong stack because they're together basically and cut them out wrong so add these little swatches to your instructions as well um, we're going to get through all of that so I think we're ready here um, the next thing I want to go over with you is how to organize your fabric before you cut. So remember, we have all of our layout sheets in one bag, and we've kind of stacked them in order from one up to the largest number. So now if I come back to my fabric, and I'm going to read through, and I'm going to pair up my layout sheets to the fabrics, so for fabric F1A, it tells me I have to use template layout sheet number one and number two. And I have them attached to the fabric. I like to sit down when I'm doing a lot of cutting for one particular block group and organize that and that stops me from picking up the wrong template layout sheets. Because if you look at this one, all of these templates look alike. And it's hard sometimes to tell just by reading everything what fabric it's supposed to go on. So this will really help you keep things straight. On my background fabrics, my layout sheets look identical. So if I actually stack them on top of each other, the left and right pieces are actually going to be identical for the two colors. And that's the other reason you want to pay attention and actually put some swatches on those. So what I've done is I've gone through and I have each one of my fabrics put together, including all of my spikes. They're all paired up with the template pieces before I do any cutting. And I'm just it's all organized nice for me. The other thing you're going to find with this pattern is if you cut your strips, if you did the pre-cutting off of the instructions in Quiltster, you're going to notice that the strip sizes um, are larger than what your cutting instructions are telling you. For example, I'm going to read you a note. It says if you pre-cut your strips using the Quiltster app, you will need to sub-cut each 16 inch strip into two 8 inch strips to achieve the number of strips listed in the cutting instructions. So as you're going through, as you're reading those, it's telling you which ones you have to do a second cut to get the right number of pieces. So we're going to start with fabric number one, um, fabric 1A, and I'm going to show you how to cut. I don't want you guys to have to sit and watch me do all of the cutting as we go through all of these instructions. So what I'm going to do is cut all of the pieces for um, my A groups, and then I'm going to set the B groups aside and cut those later. And if you're confused about what my A group color group is and my B color group is, let me go back and explain that just a little bit. So if we're looking at the quilt, 
these spikes, this is actually my A color group, I believe. Yes, I'm looking at my color chart. And if you look at your color chart on the top of page two, you'll see that all of these are listed as A spikes. And this is my A background color group. This one is listed as my B color group. And all of these are B spikes and B backgrounds. So as I go through, I'm going to set all of the B groups aside. And I'm just going to do that right now. So this is a B color group. This is A color group. And this is B color group. And that will save us in a lot of cutting. And then when I get down to my backgrounds, those are going to be split into both color groups. So we have to cut those as well. I'm going to show you the cutting for the A group on the spikes. I'm only going to show you how to cut one set. Then I'm going to pause the video and I will finish up the cutting and come back and we'll complete the cutting for the other groups. That way you guys don't have to watch me cut this much fabric. Once I cut one, the rest of them are just like it. We just follow instructions. So we're going to set this stuff aside. Move this over here. And I'm going to pull my bag and set everything over by my iron out of the way. I need my whole board. And get rid of our little strips. And my first set of instructions tell me I have to subcut these big strips into these. This is a 16 inch strip, and I have two of them. And we're going to stack them together. And then we have to subcut them into 8 inches. I'm going to line them up at 10. I'm going to grab my big cutting board ruler. And place this right on 18. And I've got that set up for 8 inches. All right. Now we're going to open up our strips. And I want to look at my instructions again. Because in these instructions, it tells me that I need to make two stacks of two pieces. So I'm going to open up these pieces right here. That's my first stack. I'll just put this one aside. And on my very first stack, it tells me to use template layout sheet number one. And see what I did? I also took my layout sheets and I added some little swatches to them so I didn't accidentally pick up the wrong layout sheets. So this is template layout sheet number one. And we're going to grab my little ruler here and we're going to cut the salvage off. There's not a lot of leftover room with these pieces. They're pretty big so you need to make sure that you have that right along that edge. And you're going to have to line it up along the bottom edge or the top edge as well. Because we have to flip these templates. So I'm going to put my repositional glue and I want to make sure that I get some of that repositionable glue on each one of the template pieces. 
on the back. So as I cut them apart, the template stays with them. We're going to let this dry for a minute. And now I'm going to line it up along the edge and along the bottom. Then we're going to take this, kind of fold it back a little bit, and I'm going to cut just up to there, fold my fabric back. I need to cut just a little bit more. There we go. And this piece up at the top, I don't need to worry about that. So now we're going to pull this piece up, put it on our table, and we're going to place this along the top. And it looks like we're doing pretty well. And I'm just going to move it over because it's always nice to have a few bigger scraps. I'm going to move it a little bit further. Now we're going to place a binder clip on each one of those sections. And I'm actually going to demo with these pieces, so I'm going to go ahead and cut these apart right now. So I'm going to find cut line one. And I'm going to use my, I'm going to use the add a quarter ruler because the add a quarter ruler has the lip and it sets right on top and balances on the paper clips so I don't have a tipped ruler. There's cut line two. Cut line three. Now we're going to stack these pieces, and this is section 12, so we're going to start back here and stack them in order. Keeps me organized, and we're going to place those over here. We're going to repeat the cutting for this strip. You can pause. Okay, I have the template layout sheet for number two is all set up, and we're going to finish cutting on the, saw, the each line.
We're going to start with number 12, 10, that's 8, 6, that's 4, and 2. And I'm going to set these in another pile. These go into another pile. I'm going to move this stuff. Because one of these is for my right unit and one's for my left unit. The left and right side of the first color group. So I'm going to show you how to set up your strips to cut and then I'm going to take a break and get everything cut and then we'll come back and we'll set up our or finish the cutting on the background pieces. If I look at my templates, I can tell whether or not I have how much fabric I have. And for me, quite often, I think it's easier just to, if there's enough room, to cut this in the middle and then work with two pieces here. One's for my left side template and one's for my right side template. So if I look at this, this one says F1R, and this template is an F1L template. So what I like to do is get these glued in place. I'm going to trim the salvage off along the edge of the first, this template. Now we're going to cut the first template piece. And we only have to cut four of these. So I got, I cut two with the first cut, and now I'm cutting two more. And that gives me four pieces, and that will be for my left side stack. And this one's for the right side step. I'm going to move these. And we're going to start another step. Now I'm going to give you guys a break. And then I'm going to come back and show you all of these pieces cut. And then we'll finish up with the rest of the cut. We are going to complete the cutting. I've got all of the strip cutting done for the um, spike units. And I'll actually just show you how nice my bags look. So I have my bag F4 done. I have everything in bag F3 and F1 and F2. And so we're just going to set this aside and then we're going to finish the rest of the cutting before we get into the paper piecing. So we are now on page four and we're at fabric number eight. And I've done some pre-cutting already so that we can shorten this video down for you. It'll be really easy. So if we look at the cutting instructions it actually told us that we 
we started out with 28 inch strips and then we had to cut the 28 inch strips into two 14 inch strips. Then you're going to divide the strips and stack two strips together, both facing right side up, and the other two strips are stacked together. So on the first two strips, we're going to use the FL templates, and that's right at the layout on how we're going to set this up is at the bottom of page four. And I've already cut the template pieces for unit F, the right unit pieces, and that layout is sitting at the top of page four in the second column. Okay. I'm just going to do a demonstration on how I set this up. I don't have a table that's large enough for me to spread it all out, and there's a good chance you won't either. So I kind of want to go over how I um, get these laid out. I look at that image, and I'm going to put the book here. Can you guys, can you see the image? Okay. Um, so right here, it's going to show that I have my template um, F5L1 and F4L1. And I want you to notice that on these templates, I've cut right around the outside edge. Now, you have a solid line, then there's a dashed line. That dashed line is the finished side. And then we've given you extra space because these pieces are actually for foundation paper piecing. And so we had to make them bigger. And we're going to look at that picture and try to get that lay down as close to the edge as we can. But pay attention to the grain line. Because the grain line, you want the grain line to go straight across the uh, cross grain on your pieces. So I've got that set up as close as I'm, I feel comfortable to the edge there. And I've got my grain line set up, so I'm going to flip this over, and we're going to put some glue on the back side of it, and I'm going to do the other template just the same way. All right. Now we're going to place that right along the edge. Make sure that that point has some fabric under it, and then straighten up your piece so that you have your grain line. This piece flips upside down. No, it doesn't. It sits just like that. And because I've trimmed these, uh, it's right along the edges, it's really easy to just place them right next to each other because I'm just going to cut between those. I don't have to be real accurate because it's a paper piece unit. So now since I don't have enough room to spread out the next two templates, I'm going to take this and cut this and give myself about an eighth of an inch excess fabric along the edge. We're going to set that template aside. And then I'm going to lift this out of the way. And we're going to bring our fabric up. We're going to line up the edges and then just pick this whole piece up and line it up and match the edges. Now all we have to do is take this and cut along that edge. And I'm going to set that piece off to the side. And then we're going to finish cutting these pieces apart. And we just have to cut right along the edge of that template. Now on the curve, just use your curved ruler and if, you're, if you feel comfortable cutting without the ruler, then do so, because it doesn't have to be an accurate cut, but the curved ruler kind of helps you keep that together. And it is through four layers of fabric is what I'm cutting through right now. The ruler keeps that fabric from sliding. Okay, we have that piece cut out. 
Now we're going to cut the top off of this one. And I'm going to cut the bottom off. We're going to set those two templates to the side. And then we're going to come back to that middle section of our fabric. And lay it on our board. Now we're going to grab our T template. And you want to make sure you're working with the right T template. So just read it. It says I have to have T template F3L, which is what I have. And notice that I didn't trim all the way around my T template. I don't need to. I like to leave the excess around it and then trim after we get everything stacked to the right size. So I'm going to put some of my glue on the back side of this. And again, <clears throat> pay attention to that grain line. Now I'm just going to come up here and I'm going to cut about a quarter of an inch outside that line. And then I'm going to do a free hand cut just like that. I'm going to have to. Okay. So now let's take this piece and we're going to move it up here. We're going to get rid of that excess fabric. And then I'm going to do a free motion cut along here with my ruler. And it's a, I gave myself about an extra quarter of an inch. When you look at your template, it has four TR, actually five TRP lines there. And Then the other thing that I want you to bring to your attention is right at the bottom of this seam, it says straight. And when we start to assemble right at that point, then you're going to start sewing straight. So this attaches to a straight piece. Okay, the next step. Before we trim all of this down, I like to sew my TRP lines through all four layers. Now, on this particular template, I'm going to have to come back and either mark them or sew each one of them individually. But I like to sew the template on to the fabric through all the layers and then go back and trim. And I normally do the trimming right before I'm ready to do the curved piecing. The person that designed five TRP lines on this must have thought we liked sewing them. That's a lot. However, every one of those lines are going to match up to seams, different seams. So they are important. After we get them sewn, let's cut the threads off. We're going to flip it over. And cut them off at the back. And 
Okay, get rid of all those threads. Now, normally this is when I would put it into the bag and I would not trim around it until I was ready to sit down and do the curved piecing. But for now, I want to show you guys how to trim it, so we're going to go ahead and do it. We're going to take this and that's going to be lined up. And you're cut perfectly right along those edges. And remember that little line where it said straight? Actually, that's a straight seam right at the end there. I'm going to cut this end off. So that sets my smart corners. Now we're going to come back to the ruler the curved ruler and just let it roll back as you do your cutting and cut right on the line and now we're going to roll it forward as we get to the end there and when I get down to that end I'm going to change and I'm going to to a straight ruler and cut straight and then we're going to do again we're going to set these templates over with the other ones for now Now we're going to go to fabric number nine, and I've done some pre-cutting on these pieces. So the yardage on there, we were supposed to cut two ten and three quarter inch strips, which we did. And I just find it easier. I know that if I cut it right in half, my fabrics. So I'm cutting it basically around 21 inches. I can get both of my template pieces on here. These are for our curved paper piecing. And one of these pieces is, has, is for the right side units, and the other one's going for the left side units, all right? So we're going to look at, we're going to put this on, and then we're going to look at the picture, and it tells you where to position template layout sheet number six, and template layout sheet number five and this is number five and so it goes up here like this and what that's doing is that's putting that somewhat on the bias so that those pieces are easier to sew on and this is template layout sheet number six So when you get done, you're going to have four of these pieces, um, and you're going to have to cut them individually because every one of these go on to paper. Now what I'm going to do is show you how you rough cut around them because you don't need to cut accurately right now. And I'm just doing a rough cut. Okay, I'm going to set these aside and finish them, and I'm going to show you the next step. I don't need, you don't need to watch me sew or cut those. So, 
my next step after you get these cut out you're going to do a rough cut on them there's a TRP line a TRP and a TRP and you're going to sew them and I've already sewn them because you guys have seen me sew enough of those so I'm going to set this aside as well and I can finish this later and then what I'm going to do now is show you how to cut these out so that inside seam where it says sew side that's important that has to be cut right accurately with that line the upper line is not as important for that nor are the ends important to make sure they fit perfectly you just just cut them close And so we have that piece cut. And now this one tells me to cut here. And then we're going to cut this inside curve. And we really don't have to worry about the top if you don't want because it, it's all going to get trimmed off anyway. But since I started it, I'll just finish it. Okay. When you get all of these pieces cut, then you're going to sort them out and you're going to put all the left side pieces, go into bag F6, and all the right side pieces go into bag uh five so this is my bag six bag and i'll sort the rest of them later so we have one more fabric we have to cut and that's f10 and again this is this is a template layout sheet and i've already cut part of them out so i'm going to start and the first thing I'm going to do is show you something that might be a little new. Do you see these big black dash lines around here? That means that you're going to cut all of these pieces out as one. What I call this is a template, a T-template layout sheet, okay? And what we're doing here is we're trying to make it so it's easier for you to cut things out and not have to worry about how they're going to be positioned. It also keeps all of my fabrics, the grain line going through the way I want it to on my quilt piece when I'm done. And the fabric I have is actually a little bit directional. So this is going to work really nice because it's going to keep my direction from all my pieces exactly the same on all sides. So what I do with these is we're going to come in and, and we're going to cut right around that dash line. Don't separate the templates. And I want to get the excess off because our strips are cut right at the same size as that dash line. I keep stepping on something. It's one of my bags. I'm going to cut this bit off, my salvage. Then I'm going to put my...
And I'm working with um, the left side pieces. So I'm working with the bottom, the picture on the bottom. Now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to cut along this line. Then we're going to pick this piece up. So if I look at my layout sheet now, what I have is I have some TRP lines, again, that I have to sew. And I've already done that on these. I'm not going to make you watch me sew them. So they're right there. I missed one. So I better go back and do that. After I get those done, I'm going to fold these up and put them in their bags. And it tells you on your... Um, graphic if you go to the top of page five the first column it tells you what bags these pieces go into so that's going to be all the demo for the cutting and we're going to go finish cutting and catch up with everything and then we'll come back and do the paper piecing all right you guys it's another day another video if you're wondering why I know it's another day, it's because I have a different shirt on for the rest of this video today. Um, what we're going to do is today is I'm going to show you how to do the paper piecing for and the stacking for unit F1L. And once I show you how to do F1L, I'll show you where the TRP lines are. That's one of these. Then you'll be able to go through and finish up the rest of them. So we're going to go over the paper piecing part of it. And you, we're, we are now on page 5. And we start at the first column where it says Foundation Paper Piecing Unit F1L. And it's actually going to be your bag 2. All right. So if you guys read through the, your instructions, by the time you get to the fourth round in this series of patterns, you're going to find that the, the paper piecing instructions are pretty much the same all the way through. Um, so you don't have to go back and read it and follow it step by step if you're new because you've probably figured out all of the basic steps to do it. But one of the things that happens is sometimes I throw something in there or we change something and if you don't read through the instructions before you start, you won't catch that little change. So just be aware that you should probably just read through everything and make sure there isn't something new in there. And if there is something new, just take and highlight it with a highlight marker so that when you get to that part, it, you'll go back and you can review what it tells you to do. So I'm not going to follow the instructions as I do the paper piecing because I've done this a million plus times. So I'm just going to start and show you the steps. And we're going to move my book out of the way while we go through these pieces. I already did one of them so that I can show you how to trim in the end. I've started two. I put section one on two of the pieces. But then on this particular unit, what I did is I came in and when I teach, I teach so many different ways and short cuts and tips that I'm always doing something different. So don't get confused if one time I show you one type of one tip and the next time I show you how to do it a different way. But um, the other day I was showing you guys how you could put red markers on your line so that when you flip it over you can see all of the um, section numbers as you fold back the paper. On this particular one instead of marking up all the lines I only marked up the areas that I need to know and one of the things we need to know when we're working on a paper like this is where does this 
the points end for like section two, section four, um, six, and it's actually all the even numbers on this particular one. I want to know where the bottom is on them, and I also want to know where the top is because it falls in the middle of my paper, and I can't use the boundary of the paper as something to look at to register where I'm going to put my foundation paper. So that's why you're going to see these marks because it shows me where the bottom of these points are. All right, so we're going to start with section one, and I'm going to use my repositionable glue and put it right on section one and make sure you don't get this into section two and then we're going to let it dry for a few seconds before we slip it on there and now I'm going to place it this is the straight of the grain right here so I'm going to line that up just along that edge on that first piece so you we're going to see that I have some excess there I like to get rid of that excess and just get it out of the way and I'm going to start a little scrap pile over here. I have two sizes of my fold templates because the very first two pieces when I fold, when I do these long lines, actually it's going to be the same on line one, three, five, seven, and nine. I'm going to be folding the whole length of that paper. so when I'm doing the some of the lines I'm only going to need this one but I like the long one when we have to fold the full length so we're going to place this on line one and line one starts here and ends here so you're in between my fingers that's my sew area but I have to fold the whole paper so I'm just going to come down here and we're going to crease the paper all the way down so that I can get that to fold over like that and just crease it a little bit and then we can just take the add a quarter ruler and put it up there and we're going to trim so my next the next thing we're going to do is find um oh we forgot to stack let's go back and stack now that we have everything ready um out of my bag, remember this is the way they came out when we cut them and we had them all stacked in order, but now we need to join the two piles. So what I like to do is flip the pieces over like this. And this one is the last piece, which is section 12, and we're going to put section 11 on top. And we're going to match up the sew sides. Then we need to go to our dark purple. That's sex for section 10. This is section 9. This is for section eight, seven, six, and I'm gonna move that paper clip, five, four, three, two, and we've already added one to the foundation papers. Now we're just gonna set these up out of the way and we're going to pull section two over and I'm only doing three pieces because I already finished one we're going to pull that template off and I'm just going to leave it there while I stack we bring this piece over well this is where that little mark is going to really come in handy because I have to have fabric down to the tip of that mark so when I place this on here I can make sure I have the fabric up there and I can look and see that it's placed right along that edge. Once I get one of these in position, I just have to do a copycat. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to basically lay it in the same position, offset it. And then when I pick this up, I'm going to find the bottom of that mark and I'm going to hold on to the fabric underneath with my fingers. So watch my fingers. So we're just going to hold that down and then we position that and we set it right on top. Because when you try to slide that, that bottom piece is going to move on you. Then we're going to take the next piece and as I pick it up, I'm going to find the bottom and the top. We're going to hold that down with my fingers and we're going to put it on. And I'm going to move this up. I got it a little low. So we're going to move it up. 
Remember when you're putting these on, I'm going to move these off, just kind of go over this. A lot of people will try to pair up the ends of the fabric, and you don't want to do that. What you need to do is find where I marked out section 2, and you need to make sure that that's centered and that you have fabric underneath that section. That's the whole trick to paper piecing is when the foundation paper is folded back, you have to recognize where your section is and you have to make sure that the fabric you just put underneath it is going to be directly under that section. All right, so now I'm going to get rid of that paper. We're going to put some glue and I slid this so I need to re align this I lost my number one template I just found it Okay, we have all three pieces glued. We're going to take them to the machine, and I'm going to set this up so it goes through the machine like that. I'm going to place it under my pressure foot. Then I'll move my hand. There we go. And I'm going to put my pen, and so here's line one here, and I'm going to start about a quarter of an inch before this dash line that comes off on line, it's actually line two. So we're going to start a little bit before we get to the solid line for line one. Okay, and I'm just going to set the other two aside and I'm going to just go through a few steps because you don't need to watch me chain piece. And we're going to finger press this and then hit it with my iron. This is what it looks like from the back. It has a little long tail that's not sewn down. So now we're going to flip it over and we're going to find the fold template here, the shorter one, and we're going to place it on line two. So we're going to lift the paper and we're going to bring that back and we're going to grab that long tail and then you're going to just pull the fabric and tear that, so those stitches right there. You're going to tear the paper from around those stitches, and then that piece will lay flat for you. Going to trim. And one of the things I'm going to suggest is that you may want to draw a line kind of down here along the bottom on these pieces just so that you always remember where your tip is. So like here's the tips of each one of those sections. Then we're going to grab the next piece of fabric and I'm going to place that on there and see where I drew that little mark where that tip was? That's the bottom. I have to have fabric down to that tip right there. Now we're going to glue it and sew it on, and we're going to repeat those steps over and over and over until it's all done. So right now I'm going to set this aside. And then I'm going to grab my finished unit. Pull it out of the bag so you can see what it looks like. Here it is, all finished. So we're going to flip it over. And I'm going to show you, you have one, two, three, four TRP lines that you have to sew on this piece. 
After those TRP lines are sewn, then you're going to grab your ruler and you're going to trim around the outside edge. Just like that. Cut that little smart corner. And then you're going to do a, a cut on that one. I need my round ruler, my curve. Then you're just going to work around that curve. Now we have a trimmed unit. And I cheated. I didn't sew my TRP lines on this one for you, but you've watched me sew enough. All right, that's the end of this part. Now we're going to do some curved paper piecing. It's going to take me just a second to set up for it. All right, the demo that we're going to do right now is for curved paper piecing. It's quite easy. Um, it's just I'm going to go over the steps again. There's three units that use this. And the units are in your pattern are unit um, F3L, and there's F5L and F4L, okay? So the very first piece that's on there was cut with a t uh, template, and the template is Section 1 template F3L1. And that template piece, what you're going to do is flip this over with wrong sides up, we're going to grab our repositionable glue and we're going to glue those that on and let that set. The other unit is um, for unit F5L. So I'm going to do the same thing. And I'm just putting it on the back, but don't you don't want to put it past where this at hatched area, that shaded area is on your foundation paper. So don't get anything there. And then we have to do the same for this piece. All right, so each one of these have a, has a template, and the fabric's going to be wrong side up, and then you're going to position this onto that template underneath the foundation paper. So we have the template piece under there. And there's a basting line that's a dash basting line. You have to make sure that the fabric is up past that basting line. It does not need to be up past the edge, just past the basting line. So we're going to position that one. Then we're going to put this one in place. And we're doing the same thing with this. So here's my basting line, and I have fabric just up past that basting line. And then on this one, we do the same thing. So we have, and then we have the fabric up past the basting line. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to sew the TRP lines. But I want to bring your attention to this TRP line. There's two dots on it right here. So when, you're, when you see a TRP line that has two dots, what you want to do, that's a two-part um, sewing process. So we're going to start and we're going to sew back from the dot that's on sew line two in. And we have to do that on each one of them. So that's the first thing we're going to sew. Pick up the next one, we're going to do the same thing with it.
Okay, now before we, we're going to trim these threads off of here. That way we don't get them caught in when we sew our seams. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come and sew the basting line and it says basting line, stitch line one. And it says that on each one of these pieces. So we're going to go ahead and sew all those basting lines. And you can just use a regular stitch. If you get too big of a stitch when you're sewing that basting line, it'll kind of gather the fabric and you don't want that to happen. I bumped the camera that probably made my picture a little blurry. Okay, the pieces for section two, we already sewed the TRP lines. Those were sewn before we actually cut those apart. And if you didn't sew those, you're going to wish you had right now. So we're going to remove the paper. Then we're going to find our uh, flower pin here. And I'm going to place and match up my TRP lines. We're going to place our fabrics wrong sides to, or right sides together. I'm sorry. Put a pin in there. We're going to grab our glue pin, not the repositionable, just the glue pin, fabric glue pin. And then you're going to place your glue inside that basting line. Then we're going to do the other side the same way. Stretch the fabric as you're gluing that down, but at the same time, you don't have anything that you really have to match at the end. So what the basting stitch does is it sets the curved pieces on both of the units. They're exactly the same radius. So we're going to grab the next piece. And this one says I need the section for template 5, and that's it right there. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on this piece right along that where I put my pen and then I match the TRPs. Then we're going to grab a flower pen, put it in place, then fold this back and glue out. And when you're looking at it, if you're actually working on it, this is my right hand, you're actually putting that glue on the left side of that basting stitch line. 
and then just glue it in place. That one's ready to sew, and then we're going to do the last one. So remember, the glue goes on the left side of that basting line roll that around do the second half okay so now we're going to just take all three of these to our machine and we're actually going to sew in it on sew line two. So I just take my pressure foot and we're going to set it down right next to the edge of the paper. I'm going to pull that pin out now. And I'm going to put my hand just underneath the paper. And we're going to, just so that it's lifted off of the fabric underneath, and we're going to sew. When you're sewing these, your stitch length should run around two point or one point eight. Then we can grab the next one. I'm going to move my iron so it's hot for me. And now we'll sew the last one. Okay, so the next, the second part of that TRP line is actually already sewn onto the vein that we just added. So all we have to do is just take this to the iron, and we're going to finger press right around that curve. All right, we're going to go to the iron.
Now we're going to grab our curved ruler. You're going to trim the edges of that curve. So we have one trimmed, and I'm going to trim all of these because I want you guys to watch me to make sure that you always do your trimming first before we go in, and then we're going to cut out underneath that vein. But we have to trim first. And you have a little tiny smart corner there that you need to trim that off. We're going to clean off the table here for a second. Move these rulers out of the way. Okay. Now that everything is trimmed, okay, if you open this up, you have a whole other, that fabric is there, and you will need to cut that out. You want to put the paper down to the table, and then you're going to hold, flip back that vein, and then you're going to cut to right to the inside of your basting line. So when I cut it off, I cut all of my stitches off. Now I have a nice clean cut along the inside. So paper down, fold back the vein, trim inside the basting line. So we're trimming on the left side of it. Cut all of those stitches off. And then we do that again. So we're going to fold back the vein. This one's going to show up a lot better for you. So you can see that excess purple. We have to get rid of that. So we're going to come down here and trim just to the inside of the basting line. The object is to cut the threads for the basting stitch off. So when I look at the piece I cut off, I cut off all of my threads on that basting line. 
now we remove the paper and we have all of our pieces ready to go.